we go. Good morning. Good morning. All right, thank you very much. I'm Mark Rosell. I serve as the Dean of the Shar School of Policy and Government, and we host the Center for Security Policy Studies. I'm really happy to welcome you uh, to their annual symposium. And this is the sixth year that the center has offered the Shar School community and guests a deep exploration of a topic of enduring importance in the field of international security, something we do especially well, I think, here at the Shar School. Uh, the, this year, the topic is the global commons. And I hope that all of you, by the end of the day, will be experts in why uh, the global commons are of great consequence for international peace and security. And you'll be hearing from various experts on climate, the oceans, on cyber, on AI, public health, migration, all the diverse and complicated issues that comprise the global commons. Uh, the center also offers our students a variety of other experiences to prepare themselves for careers in the field. Uh, this semester, students will have a chance to participate in two crises simulations, one on Ukraine and the other on East China Sea. The center also collaborates with two other centers at the Shar School. I want to bring those to your attention that focus on questions of international security. Uh, the Michael Hayden Center and the Terrorism, Transnational Crime and Corruption Center. Uh, I'm very proud of the wide variety of activities that we uh, offer to students uh, and to the larger community here at the Shar School. And today is a perfect example uh, of why we want to be a platform for enlightened discussion about enduring challenges in the international system. So we are very grateful to the scholars from other institutions who are joining us today for this important conversation. So let me now invite the center's director, Professor Ellen Leibson, uh, to tell you about the day and to also introduce our opening speaker. Ellen. Uh, thanks so much, Dean Roselle, and uh, welcome and good morning to everybody. Um, so we have the pleasure of offering our sixth annual uh, uh, symposium, and you may a little bit be curious on the topic that we chose. Um, I want to first acknowledge my collaborator in setting up the program, Doyle Hodges, professor here at the Shar School, maritime security expert, and uh, one of our professors who teaches uh, ethics and the use of force. He and I really brainstormed over uh, many, many weeks to develop the program and to identify some of the terrific speakers we have lined up for today. Um, as you know, this week is the opening of the UN General Assembly, and if you heard the opening remarks of the UN Secretary General, you would think that we had collaborated with him on uh, today's event because he spoke of, first he started with the tragedy of, of the flooding in, in Libya in the town of Dirna. Um, and he said, Dirna is a sad snapshot of the state of our world, the flood of inequity, injustice, the inability to confront the challenges in our midst. Our world is becoming unhinged, geopolitical tensions are rising, global challenges are mounting. Existential threats, climate, disruptive technologies, and we do so at a time of chaotic transition. For much of the Cold War, international relations were largely seen through the prism of two superpowers, now we are rapidly moving to a multipolar world. In many ways, it can be positive. It brings new opportunities for justice and balance in international relations. But multipolarity alone cannot guarantee peace. So I, I just think that's a very dramatic framing. I was kind of worried that Gutierrez was really depressed. But, um, uh, but he is trying to capture a moment of urgency and try to motivate and inspire the uh, international community to do more on these questions that really, uh, there are still disputes between sovereign states over borders and resources and territory, but today we're moving up to a slightly higher level of understanding of how the international system works. So what are the global commons? The commons are the places that are not owned or managed or governed by sovereign states or multilateral institutions. They are those open, free spaces that serve us all, 
Um, and there's a concept called the tragedy of the commons. And the tragedy of the commons is that when something is free, um, it will get overused and exploited and will no longer be available for the shared use and purpose of all. The concept came out, it was it apparently dates all the way back to Aristotle. There are ancient uh, writings about the, the free uh, parts of our societies that have to be shared by all and that everybody has a stake in the sustainability of these, um, these arenas. So it started out in a very concrete, about farmland, open pastures. You know, if farmers in adjacent farms all use the pasture that isn't owned by anybody, sure enough that, that farmland will be um, overexploited and no longer be available. So it started in an environmental movement in a way about sustainability. But today we're gonna go beyond that. We're gonna talk about a variety of different cons commons um, that are that could be in the atmosphere and outer space, that could be the oceans as an international maritime system in which the limits of sovereignty are very e exposed and clear. Uh, but we'll also be talking about the commons that the 21st century commons that don't have any material or physical attributes. So uh, cyber as a platform, uh, artificial intelligence and disinformation. And our opening and closing speakers are going to introduce yet more commons. Uh, we're delighted to have Kathleen Newland here to start the day, who will be looking at marit her work on maritime migration. And we'll end the day with a, um, a, a terrific speaker who is interested in all the intangible things about biological change in the world of public health, in the world of the human genome, and how the international system is not really set up yet uh, to grapple with those topics. So um, you may also ask, you know, how is this related to international security? Is this really a security topic? And it's certainly not a conventional security topic. It doesn't, there's not too much of a role for the armed forces of various countries, but it's not without security content. And I think we should be clear in our minds that the failure to protect the commons can be a trigger for conflict. Um, and that the, um, the, some of these arenas, some of these domains of the commons, including uh, cyber and outer space, are for sure arenas for great power competition and hopefully to be avoid outright conflict, but they are certainly part of the new world of geopolitics and competition. So um, I hope it's a kind of far-flung agenda for the day. I hope you'll find it very stimulating and interesting and be able to make the connections for yourselves in uh, why and how the global commons are part of the international security agenda and part of how we should be thinking about the longer term uh, prospects for peace and stability. So I'm really delighted now to welcome uh, Kathleen Newland. She's a friend because we had, uh, she had served on the board of the Stimson Center when I was the president there. But she is really uh, a very formidable figure and national authority on a range of migration issues. And when I saw that she had produced a book, and I, uh, I have the book, there, there it is, a beautiful cover, All at Sea. Um, she was the uh, kind of director and co-author of a book on maritime migration a few years back that really grappled with all the complicated dynamics of which seas are the responsibility of coastal uh, powers and what parts of the seas are um, really in, in some international space that has to be governed in a more cooperative way, not by the interests of individual states. Um, and so she was the co-founder of the Migration Policy Institute. I strongly recommend that you look at their website that was created about 22 years ago. Um, and the Migration Policy Institute really does produce and advocate for uh, smarter policies on migration in general, but uh, Kathleen has a particular interest in maritime migration. She has been on the boards of the International Rescue uh, Committee, the um, UN High Commissioner on Refugees, the US branch of that, and the foundation for the Hague process on migrants and refugees. So she's really a great authority, and I thought it was an important to start the day in a uh, focusing in on an issue that had a very profound human security dimension. So that while we're up in the clouds thinking of global commons as a kind of abstract idea, really what we're talking about is issues that affect 
life and death choices that individuals in desperate countries make, and what are the responsibilities for the countries uh, that may be receiving these folks. So it's a, it's a human security uh, story that does touch the interests of the developing world as well as the great powers, and I know that Kathleen is going to, and I'm sorry I've um, jumped ahead on your slides. Um, um, I, I know that Kathleen will help us understand this complicated topic better. So thanks to, to you all for coming, and welcome to Kathleen Newland.